it's a pleasure and secondly this is a very good and very important to cut from your time sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah attending the lectures because this is the time when you raise your iman Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala an so one of the sahaba called uh, Hamdala al-Ansari radiyallahu ta'ala an Hamdala said to Abu Bakr oh Abu Bakr nafaqa Hamdala nafaqa Hamdala it means I am a hypocrite Abu Bakr wonders, يعني, it is a strange that somebody is telling about himself that I am munafiq. What is wrong, Handala? He said, when we sit with the Prophet وسلم, during the, his lectures, after the salah and the masjid, we feel our iman very high. Our faith is very strong. But just we leave the Prophet وسلم, and we entered our houses and we sit with our the wife and children forget everything then Abu Bakr said Wallahi by Allah I feel the same thing when we are with the Prophet وسلم, the Iman the faith is very high very strong when we go home we forget let's go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then when they say to the Prophet وسلم, Handala said to the Prophet وسلم, he said يعني, this is normal, of course. He said exactly the Prophet Sallallahu If you are at the same level, like when you are in the lecture, then the angels will shake hands with you. It, mean, it means you will be an angel. Sa'atan wa sa'a ya hamdala. Sa'atan wa sa'a. Sa'atan wa sa'a. Yani one hour. Okay, you pray, you cry, you recite the Quran, you attend the Islamic lectures, and the other hour with your family. Of course, it doesn't mean that one hour in the haram, one hour in the halal. No. For your all your life should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it means one hour you pray, as I said, you cry, you recite Quran, you attend the lectures, and one hour for your family, for maybe you will do some exercise, sport for your body. So inshallah, yani, this lecture inshallah, it will be very important that to raise our iman inshallah and the angels as you know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said when you sit and you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you recite Quran the angels will surround you the sakina tranquility will, uh, will be revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala My topic is very important, it is a fact I'm talking about a fact. Uh, SubhanAllah, I remember when my friend uh, in the hospital, I, because I'm working in the hospital. So one day we were chatting and then we mentioned something. Then he said, I don't want to die. He, he doesn't like to die. Okay. And he, as if he's saying, now is not the time of death. I should take my right in this life. He believes maybe I should live 60 years or 70 years after retirement, then this is the time to die. No, the, die, the death is a fact, and this fact can come anytime. SubhanAllah. Allah says in the Quran clearly, Kullu nafsin Every soul will taste death. Every soul. Me, you, the prophets, alayhi salatu wasalam. Uh, the good people, the bad people, all of them will die. And you cannot escape death. The uh, ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَيْنَمَا تَكُونُ يُدْرِكُمُ الْمَوْتِ Wheresoever you may be, death will overtake you. Even if you are in fortresses, built up strong and high. Don't think that if I go to another place, I will not die. And there is a, يعني, uh, Hadith when Musa alayhi salatu was salam met he, 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 or the angel of death came to him and it is known that the angels the, the angel of death Malakul Maut his name is Malakul Maut he gives the uh, option to the prophets you want to die now or, or not now 
Of course, they will die. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this opportunity to the prophets, alayhim salatu wa salam. So Musa, alayhi salatu wa salam, did not want to die now. Not because he, he is afraid from death. Because, the scholars say in this hadith, hadith Bukhari, because Musa, alayhi salatu wa salam, wants to, to, to give the da'wah to more people. He did not finish his mission. He thinks like this. Why? Because if you know, Musa alayhi salatu wa salam left Egypt going toward al ard al muqaddasa the blessed land, Philistine. But subhanAllah, Musa died before he reached there. And you know the story when he told the, his friends, his companions, let's and enter this al ard the blessed land and let's fight al jabbarin the tyrant people. They refused, okay, subhanAllah, then later after 40 years, Yusha alayhi salatu was salam came after, uh, yani after Musa with a new generation and they fought the al Jabbarin and alhamdulillah they defeated them and they entered al Muqaddasa. So Musa died before entering al Ard al Muqaddasa, the blessed land. So Allah said to Malak al Maut, to the angel of death, tell Musa, O oh Musa, put your hand on the back of ox and count how many hairs under your hand and I will give you one year for each hair. Then Musa, uh, the angel of death went back to Musa. He said, oh Musa, do this and this, what Allah told me. Then Musa asked the question. Then after that, okay, when I put my hand, how many hair? 200, 300, 300, 1,000, let's say 1,000. Then after that, Musa said, and what is after that? Then the angel of death said, death. Then Musa said, after knowing this fact, and no doubt Musa knows the fact, then he said, fell on. So if I am dying, let's die now. SubhanAllah. The bro at the end of the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said, if I am there, I can show where is the grave of Musa alayhi salatu wassalam bihadfati hajar min al ard al muqaddasa because Musa loves al ard the blessed land he he said i want to be close to al ard al muqaddasa the blessed land so he was close to the blessed land bihadfati hajar like when you throw a stone how many meters 50 meters from the, about 50 meters from al ard al muqaddasa so death doesn't know age i mean doesn't care about the age the Prophet Sallallahu died with the age 63. Uthman radiyallahu ta'ala 83. The son of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi his son Ibrahim, what was his age? Less than two years. So death can come to any one of us. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died, even the best man Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when he died sallallahu alayhi wa Abu Bakr was not close to him. Abu Bakr was in a one high place or in the border of Medina. So when he heard the news that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa died, he came to Medina. He came down to Medina. Then he found Umar radiallahu ta'ala an shouting or talking loudly. If I hear anyone the saying that the Prophet Sallallahu died, I will not allow this. He is a hypocrite. The Prophet Sallallahu did not die. Abu Bakr tried to calm down Umar. He did not listen because the situation was not easy. Can you imagine the Prophet Sallallahu died? Then Abu Bakr went to another place. He started to talk. Then people came around him. Then he said clearly, من كان يعبد الله فإن الله حي لا يموت فإن كان يعبد محمد فإن محمد قد مات The one who is worshiping Allah Allah doesn't die سبحانه وتعالى The one who is worshiping Muhammad Muhammad died Then he recited the ayah وما محمد إلا رسول قد خلت من قبله الرسل أفإن مات أو قتل انقلبتم على عقابكم ومن ينقلب على عقبيه فلا يضر الله شيئا Muhammad is no more than a messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa And indeed, many messengers have passed away before him. If he dies or is killed, 
will you then turn back on your heels as disbelievers? So when Abu Bakr recited this ayah, Umar said, it was as if I had never read that verse before that day. Why? Because the situation was not an easy situation. Because always, they, Abdullah ibn Abbas said, oh, sorry, Ali ibn Abi Talib said, after the death of Umar, many times I heard the Prophet sallallahu saying, ذهبت أنا وبكر وعمر جئت أنا وبكر وعمر دخلت أنا وبكر وعمر I, many times, for many times, I hear the Prophet saying, I went with Abu Bakr and Umar. I came with Abu Bakr and Umar. I was with Abu Bakr and Umar. So they did not imagine that they will lose this pure soul, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But this was the fact that death will come to anyone. So this is number one. Death is a fact. Every soul will taste the death and no certain age for the death. After the death, al hayatul barzakhiyya, the grave, the barrier between dunya and the akhirah. Because as you know, there are three kinds of lives: al hayatul dunya, al hayat al barzakhiyya, hayatul akhirah. Now we live in the dunya, and then in the barzakh. Barzakh means the barrier between the dunya and the akhirah. And the third life, the permanent, is the Akhirah. In Jannah, in the paradise, or in the hellfire. So, Al-Barzakh, the grave. What will happen in the grave? Or how it will be in the grave? Of course, brothers and sisters, we cannot do research what will happen or what is happening in the grave. This is an unseen life. Don't you try. Well, uh, I will go to the grave and I will open it. I will check what is happening inside. You cannot. Because many people tried this and they deny what is mentioned in our hadith and the Quran. We should believe in everything in the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't think that you can know exactly everything by the science. Do you think that science will explain everything for us? No. Even if they explain something now, maybe later they will change. Yeah, for example, in, uh, in my field, medicine, how many disease, oh, oh sorry, how many medicine, kinds of medicine? How many kinds of antibiotic? They say this antibiotic is useful. Later, no, oh, it is not useful. This kind of medicine is okay. Now, no, it is not safe. This is good for the kidney. This is not good for the kidney. They change. Okay, this will elevate your uh, cholesterol level. No, this will not elevate. They change every day and many researches. So please don't trust them if they contradict the Quran and Sunnah. If they are going with the Quran and Sunnah, okay. And be sure that there is nothing from the clear scientific researches against the Quran and Sunnah. Be sure. Okay? But we should put the main thing is our Quran and the Sunnah. Why? Because it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if the researches came with the Quran and Sunnah not contradicting anything in the Quran and Sunnah, alhamdulillah. So let's see this hadith the Prophet وسلم, describing. How the angels will take the soul? Because the ayah in the Quran, Allah says, "Qul yatawafakum malakul maut." Who will take the souls? Malakul maut. And the malakul malakul maut, the angel of death, has helpers. Tawafat, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Tawafat rusuluna." Okay. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned plural. Rusuluna, it is a plural word, it means the angels. And you know the famous hadith, when uh, the, you know, the man, when he tried to make tawbah, okay, he traveled from the bad country to the good country and in the middle, okay, or between these two countries, the angels came to take his soul, the angels of mercy and the angels of punishment. So subhanAllah, at the end, the angels of 
uh, mercy took his soul. So there are more than one angel about for the, uh, taking the souls. The Prophet وسلم, said in the hadith, angels come to the dying person. And if the man was righteous, they say, come out, oh good soul, that was in a good body. Come out, praiseworthy, and receive glad tidings of mercy and fragrance and a Lord who is not angry. And the Prophet وسلم, described how the soul will come out very easy, like the water coming out of the pot. Subhanallah, this is the soul of the believer, not like the soul of the kafir. And this is repeated until it comes out, then it, take, it, it is taken up to heaven and it is opened for it and it is asked, who is this? They say so and so. It is said, welcome to the good soul that was in a good body. And they will call the soul by the best name because you know in the dunya, many of us have more than one, one name. So they will choose the best name, okay? Subhanallah, enter uh, praiseworthy and receive the glad tidings of mercy and fragrance and a Lord who is not angry. And this is repeated until it is brought to the heaven above which is Allah, the seventh heaven. But if the man was evil, subhanallah. The, of course, this is the first example, the believer. Okay, And if you notice in the hadith, the righteous man, and in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that this man will see in the grave very handsome man with him. And you will ask, who are you? He will say, I am your good deeds. And the other man, I mean the this believer will say, will, will, will see an ugly man with him in the grave. He will ask him, who are you? He will say, I'm your deeds. So subhanAllah, this is very important from our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It means you can choose who will be with you in your grave. The good man or the, the, the handsome man or the second one, the ugly. You can choose. How, how can I choose? By your deeds. If you pray, you fast, you have a car, you recite the Quran, you, uh, يعني, you treat your the, 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 your family in a good way, your Muslim brothers in a good way, you will see this. This will wait you in the grave. And the second example is clear. And the second example, the Prophet ﷺ said, but if the man was evil, they say, come out, O evil soul. That was an, an evil body, subhanAllah. And here, here's an important point. The Prophet ﷺ said, the evil soul and the evil body. The evil soul and the evil body. It means there is a connection, a strong connection between the soul and the body. So please don't think that if the body appears bad in a bad way, there is a possibility that the soul is good. Never. If your soul is good, your body will be good. If your soul is bad, your body will be bad. I mean your appearance. Yani for example, the famous example, many people who advise them, Yalla, come join us in the Salah, recite Quran, do the good deeds. No, no, the, the, faith, the faith is inside. What do you mean the faith is inside? The Iman is inside. Where is your Salah? The Iman has signs. Like the diseases. Diseases ha have signs. Symptoms and signs. Yeah, I saw many examples from medicine because this is my field. Okay. Like diseases have many signs and symptoms. So the same thing. Where is your Iman? Your deeds are the, I mean the good deeds, the sign of good, uh, the Iman. But if you don't have good deeds, so it means that there is no iman, or your iman is very weak. So the, in the hadith, if you notice, the Prophet وسلم, said, the evil soul that was in the evil body, come out blameworthy and receive the tidings of boiling water 
and the discharge of dirty wounds al hamim wal ghassaq this is al hamiq al hamim boiling water wal ghassaq the the pus of the wounds or some scholars say al ghassaq is very cold water because also this is punishment the cold weather is punishment subhanallah and other torments of similar kind all, all together. And this is repeated until it comes out, then it, take, it is taken up to heaven and it is not open for it and it is asked, who is this? It is said so and so. And it is said, no welcome to the evil soul that was in the evil body, subhanAllah. Go back blameworthily for the gates of heaven will not be opened to you. So it is sent back down from heaven then it goes to the grave. And as I mentioned, the second hadith, in the grave, there is punishment also. The Prophet ﷺ described for us, what will happen? This soul will be asked, every single of us will be asked, two angels will come to us. They are asking three main questions. Man rabbuk, o ma deenuk, o man nabiyuk. Who's your Lord? What is your religion? Who's your prophet? For the believer, quickly and easy answer. Rabbi Allah, my Lord is Allah. Dini al-Islam, my religion is Islam. Wa Nabiya Muhammad, my prophet is Muhammad. While the other man, the hypocrite, he will be asked the same questions. Man Rabbuk wa min Nabiyuk. He will say, Huh? Huh? I don't know. I hear the people saying something. SubhanAllah. Then will be hit. He will be hit strongly. Then he will shout. Everything can hear him. Except Al Jinn will ins. Human beings and the jinn. We cannot hear them, but the animals can hear. Subhanallah. So he'll be banished in Jahannam. Billah. Don't think these simple, these questions are very simple. Don't think that if I write the answer and I memorize them every day, I can answer in the grave. This is not the way to study. The way to answer these questions by practicing Islam by doing the good deeds. If you do the good deeds, then the answer will be very easy in the grave, inshallah. After the grave, Ahwal Yawm al Qiyamah, the, the hereafter, the last day, Al Ba'th, the, the uh, resurrection. It was the main problem with the kuffar. I mean between Quraysh and our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the last day. They believe Allah created us. They believe Allah gives, gives us the rain. They believe, no doubt. If you ask them, they will answer. But if you tell them, no, there is a life after this death, they will not agree. وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ Okay. He gave an example. He has set, he has set up an argument about us and forgot his creation. He said, who will live, give life to the bones when they are decayed? Allah says, قُلْ Say to them, قُلْ يُحْيِيهَا الَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ Say these will be revived by the same one who had created them for the first time and who is fully aware of every creation. It is very simple. Who created you? He can recreate you again. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is logic. But subhanAllah, sometimes the shaitan covers your brain he, and covers the heart. He will not give you the chance to think properly. Al-Akhirah, the last day, do you know 
thinking about the Akhirah, only thinking about the Akhirah, reading about the Akhirah, what did with the Prophet Sallallahu He said, Shayyabatni Hud wa akhawatuha. Shayyabatni, the white hair. The, the Prophet Sallallahu had white hair. The Sahaba, SubhanAllah, because they loved the Prophet Sallallahu they counted how many hairs, white hair. Like Anas, he said, I counted them. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. 20 hairs. 20. Well, I think about this hadith. Yani, yani, what is the meaning that they, they know, radiyallahu ta'ala, they know how many white hair in the beard of Rasulullah sallallahu What do you think about this? It means they love the Prophet sallallahu They look at him. Alayhi salatu wasalam, they counted the hair, white hair. The Prophet sallallahu said, how he became gray in hair. He said, shayabatni hud wa akhawatuha. Shayabatni hud, mursalat, waqi'a. Amma yitasa'aloon, idha shamsu kuwirat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, oh sorry, Abu Bakr said, oh Rasulullah, you have become gray. The Prophet sallallahu said, I have gone gray from hud. Al-Waqi'ah, Al-Mursalat, Amma Yitasa'aloon, Eidha Al-Shamsu Kuwirat. And because when I read this surah, I remember the Akhirah. And I became like terrified, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fearing the Akhirah. So that's why his hair became gray and, and white. Not because of the study. Now, many students, when you ask them, okay, oh, mashallah, you started the white hair. You're still yeah, young, 20 years old, 20, 22, why? Well, I, because of the study. It was very tough. I am repeating this, this uh, course two or three times, subhanAllah. Okay, or maybe, uh, well, I became uh, gray, I have gray hair because of the kids, because of building house, because of the dunya, because of the job. But the Prophet said, because of the akhirah. Think about the akhirah. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ أَتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّ زَلْزَلَةَ السَّاعَةِ شَيْءٌ عَظِيمٌ Allah says in Surah Al-Hajj, at the beginning of Surah Al-Hajj, very strong start in Surah Al-Hajj. O mankind, fear your Lord. Verily the earthquake of the hour, day of judgment, is a terrible thing. How? يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارَ the day you shall see it, every nursing mother will forget her nursling, and every pregnant one will drop her blood. And you shall see mankind as in a drunk state, yet they will not be drunken. But severe will be the torment of Allah. It is not an easy. The Prophet said, يُحْشَرُ النَّاسُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حُفَاتًا عُرَاتًا غُرْلًا غير مختونين ليس بهما ليس معهم شيء The Prophet Sallallahu said the people would be assembled on the day of resurrection barefooted, naked and uncircumcised I said, Aisha said Oh Rasulullah men and women they look at each other naked then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O oh Aisha, the matter would be too serious for them to look to one another. Hadith in Sahih Muslim. So it is not an easy situation. There are many stages in the Akhirah, in the last day. I will mention, inshallah, one hadith about one stage and the Akhirah, which is called, how many minutes I have? 20 minutes, okay. It is called Hadith of Shafa'ah. What will happen? The day, one day, the Prophet was sitting with the Sahaba, the companions, eating dinner, lunch. Meat was one, they brought to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and a four leg has offered to him 
a part which he liked. He sliced with his teeth a piece out of it and said, I shall be the leader of mankind of the day of resurrection. Ana Sayyidun Nas, the Prophet Sallallahu It means he is the best. Then he said, I will tell you the proof that I am the leader. I am the best. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I shall be the leader of mankind on the day of resurrection. Then he said, do you know why? Then the Prophet Sallallahu said, Allah would gather in one plane the earlier and the later from Adam until the last one on the day of resurrection. Then the voice of the proclaimer would be heard by all of them and the eyesight would penetrate through all of them and the sun would come near, closer. In another hadith, the Prophet will come closer one mile. Okay. Uh, what is the meaning one mile? Uh, mile in Arabic language, the word meal it has two meanings. One of them, the distance, what we know. Another meaning, the small rod used for putting the kihl. Uh, huh? Small rod? Something like this, you know, for the eye, eye eyeliner or something like this. It is a small. So this or this, the sun will come closer to, to the people and people will start sweating. But this sweating will not be because of the heat of the sun. It will be because of your deeds, our deeds. If you are a good person, no sweat. If you have little bit sins, the sweat will be up to your knees. More sins up to your waist. More sins, the sweat will cover you. Yuljimuhu il jamand, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And at that day, try your best to find something bringing, uh, making for you a shadow or to be under the shadow of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How? How you can sit or how you can stand under the shadow of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? To run quickly? No. By your good deeds. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith the seven kinds of people, as you know, where will be shaded by the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then people would then experience a degree of anguish, anxiety, and agony, which they shall not be able to bear. And they shall not be able to stand. Some people would say to the others, Don't you see in which trouble you are? Don't you see what misfortune has overtaken us, you? Why don't you find one who should intercede for you with your Lord? Now Allah did not start the punishment or the paradise or the account. So let's go to anyone to intercede for us. Let's go to Adam, alayhi salam. Then they go to Adam. They will say, oh Adam, you are the father of mankind, anta Abu al-Bashar. Allah created you by his own hands, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and breathed in you of his spirit, and ordered the angels to prostrate before you. Intercede for us, O oh Adam. With your Lord, don't you see in what trouble we are? <coughs> then Adam will say, alayhi salatu wassalam, Verily, my Lord is angry to an extent to which he had never been angry before, nor would he be angry afterward. Verily, he forbade me to go near the tree, and I disobeyed him, alayhi salatu wassalam. I am concerned with my own self, go to someone else. Go to Nuh, 
Subhanallah. Can you imagine the situation? It's very difficult. So Adam said, no. Allah told me not to eat from this tree. And I ate from this tree. I disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nafsi, nafsi, I, I, I'm concerning about myself. I don't care about you. Go to someone else. Go to Nuh, alayhi salatu wasalam. Then people will go to Nuh, alayhi salatu wasalam. Oh Nuh, you are the first of the messengers sent to on the earth. Adam is the first prophet and Nuh is the first messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. And Allah named you as a grateful servant, Abdan Shakura. Intercede for us. Nuh, alayhi salatu wasalam, will say the same thing. Then he will mention why he will not intercede because I made a dua against my people. Nafsi, nafsi, go to someone else. Go to Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam. Then Ibrahim will say the same thing and he will say, he will mention his excuse that I gave three lies. So find someone, some, somebody else, go to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Then people will go to Musa and they will, uh, they will say Allah speak to you directly and Allah gave you the alwah, the book. He, he will mention his excuse that nafsi, nafsi, go to someone else because I killed a person. You know the story in Surah Al-Qasas, I killed the innocent person. So go to someone else, go to Isa. Then people will go to Isa and people will say to Isa, O oh Isa, you are the messenger of Allah and you conversed with people in the cradle. You are his word which he sent down upon Maryam and you are the spirit from him. Intercede for us with your Lord. The same thing. Isa will say nafsi nafsi and in the hadith he will not mention a sin Isa alayhi salatu wasalam not like the previous prophets not like Adam, Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa he will not mention anything alayhi salatu wasalam go to someone else go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam then people will go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam they would come to him. Oh Muhammad, you are the messenger of Allah. And the last messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah has pardoned you all your previous and later sins, not like the previous messengers, because they mentioned sins, but he did not. Allah, Allah mentioned, Allah told us in the Quran that Allah forgave your sins the past and the future sins. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Intercede for us with your Lord. Don't you see in which trouble we are? Don't you see what misfortune has overtaken us? Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam will say, Ana laha, Ana laha, alayhi salatu wasalam. I shall then sit off and come below the throne and fall down prostrate before my Lord. Then Allah would reveal to me and inspire me with some of his praises, new adhkar. I never know these adhkar in the dunya. Okay, praises and glorifications which he had not revealed, revealed to anyone before me. Then after that, it will be say, that Allah will say, oh Muhammad, Raise your head. Ask, you'll be answered. Intercede, okay? You'll, your intercession will be accepted. Then the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will say something totally different than the previous prophets. All the prophets before him said, nafsi, nafsi, I'm concerning about myself, except our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He will say, oh Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah, my nation, my nation, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then, O oh Muhammad, I bring, then Allah, his Lord will say to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
bring and buy the right gate of paradise, those of your people who would have no account to render. Some people will enter the Jannah from the right side directly. It is like a VIP gate, VIP entrance. They will enter the Jannah without discussion, without punishment. As he mentioned, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the 70,000 people will enter the Jannah bila adab, wala hisab, without reckoning, without punishment. Who are they? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, those who don't have superstition they don't do cautery they don't use cauterization and they don't ask people to recite Quran on them or they don't use the shirk in their ruqya they put all of their trust on, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They rely totally on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. When, when the Prophet mentioned this hadith, one of the Sahaba, his name is ibn Muhsan, he said, Oh Rasulullah, ask Allah for me to be one of them. Then the Prophet said, You are one of them. MashaAllah. In another narration, the Prophet وسلم, said when Allah told him 70,000 will enter a Jannah, paradise, without rocking, without punishment. He said, Oh Allah, make them more. He said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet وسلم, with every 1,000, 70,000, with every 1,000, 70,000. Then I said, Oh Allah, make them more. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَثَلَاثْ حَثَيَاتْ مِنْ حَثَيَاتْ رَبِّي And three handful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, three handful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter the Jannah without reckoning and without punishment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be one of them. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said at the end of the hadith, by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that the door of Jannah, of the paradise, is wide like the distance between Mecca and Busra. The gate of the paradise is wide. The distance between the gate, uh, the door, is between like the distance between Mecca and Busra, not Al Basra. Al Busra is in Sham, and Busra is in, in the north of the uh, Jordan or in, in Syria. Busra, so it is a huge and big enough for the believers to enter Jannah. As Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, if I may Thank you very much for listening to me carefully. I say this.